and in today's video, I begin under the car. <laughs> so, um, what Irvin has done is install a spacer to move the engine a little bit forward so that our oxygen sensor and EGR do not hit the steering rack. And this helped out a lot. So I just finished installing the, the actual bolt for the rear mount. Take a good look at it. And now I think I'm done under here, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide on out. <laughs> so this is the bolt for the rear mount part number. Um, the only reason I'm changing him is because the previous owner, when he switched out the 5SFE engine, he was using head bolts from another engine. <laughs> yeah, right here. He was using these head bolts to hold the engine, so I was like, screw that. Let me just do it right and buy the actual hardware. So these two are for the front. Bolt. And nut. So let's go ahead and switch those out. So we're just gonna leave it hand tight because we're gonna play around with the mounts and figure out that motor mount over there with the, uh, I ended up buying some steel from Lowe's. There's the pump number. It's about 30 bucks, kind of pricey, but it is what it is. That's for the past, this one. Oh, these are for, so this is for the, this mount over here, long bolt and uh, bolts for those two right there all right so we got new hardware for the passenger mount uh there's two bolts that's the part number right there and there's one knot so we're gonna start making the custom bracket right here so we're he was making a piece right here a template that we're gonna cut off from the piece of steel that I bought from Lowe's. I already showed you guys, but just in case, that's the par number. So let's get creative. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece about seven and a half inches to make the custom mount. And I'm gonna go from there and do any other cuts. So I'm about to use the angle grinder and cut my piece. Everyone's used an angle grinder before, right? So we are just test fitting the custom bracket we're going to make, making sure all the mounts and whatnot are in the correct position. Don't want anything stretching, making sure everything's right. Gives you a general idea. So we are just making sure that the height clears the steering rack. You can see the EGR tube and the O2 sensor. They got enough clearance to clear the steering rack. So went ahead and sanded down the flange a little bit and the EGR tube as well. You don't want to grind down a lot because then you're gonna obviously crack it open. And it, look, if you see, it clears the steering rack perfectly fine. So I think we're good. So I went ahead and already drilled out the hole for the dowel pin and you can see it's pretty close to, it's pretty flush I should say. And so I'm using a C-clamp and now I'm gonna flip it around and I'm going to drill out from the bottom so that way the holes can be perfect. Even using a template you might be a little bit off so this is probably the best solution to do. And gives you a general idea as to what we're doing. So holes are already done. You do want to get a spare bracket because you are going to fuck up the threads and the holes. Mess them up, I should say. YouTube demonetization city. <laughs> but I already drilled out the holes. And so it's good. So I'm over here opening the gritty, gritty muffler. And look at that. It came with a sticker and a license plate frame. Pretty cool. Gonna go ahead and open it. Hopefully it doesn't look too shitty. So this is the bracket we ended up doing. Um, the two holes right here, I put threads on them. So that way the, the bottom piece of the motor mount goes right there. 
and then we use these two 17 mil head or 17 mil bolts to bolt it up and we used them because the bracket was going to hit the this bolt right here we ended up um, counter sinking it and use the countersink um, drill and then we use the bolt now it's sitting flush so whenever I come over here and install my mortar mount it's not on the way and oh there you go <laughs> here's a better look at the bolt gives you guys an idea of what what we did I'll go ahead and show some more pictures Now I'm gonna go, oh, and I had to make these two holes bigger as well to accommodate the 17 millimeter bolt. So now I'm gonna put it back on the motor mount and situate it back. Well, as I was explaining to you guys, I didn't mean to say um, it is a 17 millimeter this section. It is actually 12 millimeter this section right here, but the head is 17 mil. That's what I was trying to tell you guys. But there's a shot of the bracket. It should work. So I went ahead and already placed everything together. You can see how it situates itself. Everything bolts up with the original motor mount. So the, the piece of steel isn't, isn't nothing fancy, just the flat stock. That's all it is. And it's all tight. You can see there's nothing supporting the engine and it's leveled. Awesome sauce. So what we got so far, uh, fuse box is installed, igniter as well, got the Camry bracket modified on the Celica, engine intake, a couple things wired up already, plugged in, um, condenser removed, exhaust manifold installed as well, gives you an idea of where it's heading out. I already showed you guys the bracket over here, wiring harness, gotta fix a couple of the wires up here, um, see how that's broken and this was cut off but I did get all that from the junkyard, just gotta wire it up, but that's gonna be it for today, gonna come back another day and finish up. So I already took out the fuel pump. And you can see what I did right here. I got a T bracket, 516s from O'Reilly's. I saw these in O'Reilly's actually. And did this setup. And then installed the 97 Camry fuel pressure regulator. You can get this off any Camry V6. But if you guys are wondering, that's the part number right there. And what I'm not I'm not done with it. I'm actually I'm actually gonna do it a lot better, but um, I'm going to end up buying two L brackets to do an L right here. So that way this doesn't come out that far. Put an L right here and then come down here. Attach the fuel pressure regulator right here and then put an L so that it matches the return of the stock setup. Because from what Urban's tell me, it could create bubbles if we point it directly down into the fuel. So I'm going to leave this for another day, but... You guys get the general idea as to modifying the fuel pump. So back it goes into the car.